So now tell us how Cleft Lip and Cleft Palate Association of Malaysia, or CLEPOM, have I pronounced that correctly? CLEPOM? Uh, yes, that is absolutely correct. Okay. It's making a difference in the lives of babies born with this deformity. Okay. Uh, first of all, uh, just a brief introduction of CLEPOM. Uh, you know, as the name suggests, is the Cleft Lip and Palate Association of Malaysia. And it's the only one in Malaysia that's registered with the ROS and the only one that looks after cleft individ individuals in Malaysia. Um, it was founded in 1992, registered in 1993. So we are, we are well over uh, 25 years or so. When you talk about cleft, you have to understand a couple of things. Number one, uh, cleft is a congenital uh, condition. Uh, it gets presented at birth. Uh, and it can be detected antenatally, uh, especially during the 15th uh, week of pregnancy, uh, when you know, the, the machines and the instruments uh, can detect uh, the fetus, which has grown a little bit bigger. The other thing about the other thing about clef is that it is something that will happen and will continue to happen because there is not a defini definitive uh, cause that can identify why clef happens. We know when it happens during the end of the first trimester of uh, uh, pregnancy when the muscles and the joints and the tissues starts to come uh, together, but for whatever reason, it got stuck. You know, uh, uh, our lips are supposed to form and you have this, this, this long kang, whatever you want to call it. It cannot stop there, you know, and, and therefore you have a cleft. So it doesn't that, fuse, basically. Yeah, it, 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 it doesn't fuse. Uh, and, and cleft happens all over the world, regardless of your social, economic, uh, uh, status, regardless of geography, regardless of time, regardless of religion. So you have cleft born in America, US, China, Africa, so on and so forth. There are variability in the incidence rate. Okay, so number one, cleft will continue to happen because there is no medication, there is no intervention that can be done, uh, even though there are certain suggestions that, that we tell parents or recommendations, we tell parents to, to, to be mindful of uh, if they are about to conceive a baby. Now, the other thing about cleft is, even though it is a congenital uh, condition, it can be fixed. What it means is someone who is born with a cleft need not end his or her life as a cleft. A cleft can be managed. It's different from some of the other congenital birth condition. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, for those conditions, you are kind of stuck with it for life, not cleft. And because of that, you have a lot of individuals who have been very successful with their life. You know, we, 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 we have been tracking uh, three boys, Malay, Chinese, Indian. Mm -hmm. They are now in their 30s or late 20s. One is a medical doctor. Mm -hmm. He did his housemanship in hospital typing. And now he is in hospital Putrajaya uh, attached there. The other is uh, a Malay chap. Uh, he became a doctor as well. Uh, he did his husbandship at Hospital Umum Sarawak in Kuching, mm -hmm. and he is now attached to. Oh, sorry, my memory. Uh, yeah, and and then the the the, the third. Uh, he's now in his final uh, year uh, at at Utah, and we have clefts who are plastic surgeons. We have Clef who are singers. We have, you actors. know, the uh, actors. Phoenix, Anton Burr, they both... Correct. Yeah. Correct. So, so you know, Clef is not a condition that's going to debilitate your life if you know how to go about doing it. Mm -hmm. 
And that is why in Clapham, we stress a lot about uh, protocol. But coming back to your, to, to your question about what we do in, in, in Clapham, to put it in a nutshell, we get involved from the point, from the time the baby is potentially detected antenatally. So we get calls from the hospital and say, oh, you know, Zainal, Zeraini, we have a potential cleft case. The uh, scan suggests this. Could you provide antenatal counseling to the parents? So we see parents as early as the 20th week of their um, pregnancy. Mm -hmm. And then when a, a cleft baby is born in, in Klang Valley, they will not be discharged until Clapham has gone to the hospital and provide the uh, feeding bottles, uh, information about cleft uh, protocol and provide other information that the parents may have anxiety for or need to know so that they can leave the hospital uh, knowing how to care for the baby. We have had cases where babies are abandoned in the hospital. We have had cases where babies are being put in the, um, uh, what do they call it, baby hatch. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, and, and we have uh, responded to those situations and we do not want that to happen. We want the parents to know because sometimes we get cases where the next time we saw the mom, she is a divorcee because the father could not take it, mm -hmm. right? Uh, we have cases where babies are kind of a uh, brought back home and not well taken care of their, their baby, uh, the weight goes down, their overall health uh, goes down. We do not want that to, to, to happen because, you know, just because you are born with a cleft doesn't mean that you are stuck with it for life. Mm -hmm. So the next element, so that, that's, that's the second element when the baby is born so that, you know, there is knowledge, uh, there is understanding on how to care and how to make sure that the, the, the baby thrives. Mm -hmm. and will be successful in life. The, the, the next stage is walking the parents through the different uh, uh, interventions uh, that needs to be done. A cleft person, depending on the type of cleft, may need only one surgery mm -hmm. or may need multiple surgeries. And the other aspect to that is cleft is not about surgery alone. Surgery alone cannot fix cleft. There is speech, mm -hmm. there is hearing, mm -hmm. there is psychological uh, aspect uh, to cleft. Now, as we move along, now that uh, Clapham is about 25 years, so that's, that's the age of uh, someone who has gone into university, who has graduated, and who's about to go out and look for jobs. So the other area we have uh, put quite a fair bit of focus uh, recently is how to make sure cleft individuals become contributors to Malaysia. They become contributors to the nation. How do we enhance the em employability, mm -hmm. right? So for example, this particular weekend, we have a special program, um, a webinar on how young cleft adults can gain knowledge uh, on how to become successful entrepreneurs, you know? Uh, and that's what we want. At the end of the day, a cleft individual can live their own life and, you know, hopefully one day contribute back to uh, Clapper. But early intervention is very important. To Cor that. Correct. Yeah. Early, early intervention and acceptance. Mm. Right. If you don't have that, that, that acceptance, mm. then the, the chances of you being motivated to follow through all those interventions uh, will not be as great. Mm. Take for example, um, if the parent is so focused on surgeries, right? Get the surgeries done, but did not focus or did not provide equal focus on speech. What does that mean? It means you may look good physically, outwardly, but when you speak, it's a little bit different mm -hmm. and, and therefore you know because of that speech uh, it may or may not impact how you react with others in school at work and so on and so forth let me give you another example hearing again hearing is something that does not happen immediately i mean loss of hearing okay a cleft baby 
typically will be born with perfect if not normal hearing just mm -hmm. like you and i but because of misunderstanding or not knowing what needs to be done typically especially for cleft palate babies uh, you know, there is a eustachian tube that connects the uh, the uh, nasal, uh, the, the oral cavity with the uh, middle ear. That eustachian tube uh, is formed at the same time when the uh, cleft uh, is formed. When the we say when the when the palate is 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 formed. When the cleft palate is impacted, the chances are your eustachian tube is also impacted. Okay. Right. What it means, I'm sure you guys have recalled when you you are. On the flight, I was going to say, you on the flight when you need to blow your nose or to try Correct. and release the pressure that's building up. Yeah. Correct. So, so one of the um, functions uh, of the eustachian tube is to balance back, you know, what's outside, what's in the uh, inner ear. Okay? So the inner vestibular system, basically. C c c correct. So if the eustachian tube is not as well developed uh, because of cleft, there is chances liquids that goes up to the middle ear stays there and doesn't come down again right when it stays there there is a high chance for it to get infected hmm. when it gets infected the workings of your middle ear gets impacted uh, your eardrum may not be able to flex as much as it could and therefore you can't hear you know we have seen a few cases which is so sad a cleft child is born with a cleft right got the cleft fixed guess what happened seven years down the road he has to wear a hearing aid mm. right. so sad he was not born with the need for that hearing aid yeah. but due to lack of knowledge yeah. uh, a non-cleft conditions become something else but is it a lack of knowledge uh, or is it at some point the parents are like we can't afford to pay for the other surgery. We can we can do the early ones, but you know the rest yeah. of it is too expensive. Yeah, actually, I was going to ask that. Yeah. Well, um, you know, there, there, there's two things here. Number one, that is the cost of surgery, right? Uh, because someone needs to pay for the anest, for the surgeons, for the OT team, for the day uh, in the in, in the ward. The second element to that is what is the charge, the charge to the parent, the charge to the patient. If you go to a government hospital or you go to a teaching hospital, the charge is very, very low. I'm talking about 100 ringgit. I'm talking about 200 ringgit. And sometimes people say, is the queue long? No, the queue is not long. That may be the case many, many years ago, mm. but not nowadays. Let me give you an, an, an example, HKL. Hospital Kuala Lumpur, hard to find a parking space. Oh, yes. I mean, <laughs> all of them actually have to say awful. Yeah. Awful. Yeah. awful Basically, all, yeah. all, all government hospitals, teaching uh, yeah. hospitals, I yeah. mean, it's hard to find a parking space and see a lot of people <laughs> and so on and so forth. It's going to be madness. But when it comes to uh, surgery and intervention and so on and so forth, nope. You can get your surgery done. So, uh, so, for, for, I mean, like, th that was one of the things, you know, JD sort of brought up, like, okay, it, there, it is possible to have it done at a reasonable price. But does Clapham actually, um, is part of its services helping to cover the cost of all these surgeries, perhaps the more complicated and more expensive ones? Yes, uh, we do. Uh, typically, we sponsor anywhere between 60 to 90 cases a year. And we don't just Gosh. sponsor surgeries. We, we sponsor orthodontics. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we sponsor uh, special uh, equipment or things that are needed as part of the surgery. Take, for example, ABG, available bone grafting. That's when you take the, you know, the, the um, uh, bones from, 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 the, uh, uh, from, from the hip, uh, to put in layman's term, and, and that, that bone marrow is harvested, and then it is uh, then transplanted into your gums. Because your gums are made of bones, mm -hmm. right? The only way you can fix that is by putting bones, like, like putting cement. Right. Uh, that, then you have the uh, uh, flaw. And in some of those cases where the gap could be a little bit wide, um, you know, the, the doctors uh, may uh, use what's known as a, a mesh, 
or, 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 or a membrane, uh, depending on what's the, the, the uh, uh, terminology used, mm -hmm. which, which sponsor those? You know, those cost about 500 apiece. Then who sponsors you? To sponsor Sorry? these people, though, yeah. I mean, like, so you constantly do fundraising from organizations, from corporates. Um, we do uh, fundraising. Uh, you know, unfortunately, last year uh, things are, uh, you know, slowed down because yeah. of MCO. One of the things that that we do on on an annual basis is to have a an annual charity movie screening. We do that at TGV uh, Surya. Uh, KL, and, and and we take films like as such as you know, uh, was it the Good Dinosaur? And an animated movie. We take one halls or 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 two halls, mm -hmm. and, and and bring in some cleft children as well, so that you know they can interact with the uh, non cleft uh, children. Unfortunately, we can't have that uh, last year. We are very appreciative of those who have uh, contributed to uh, to us. Because without those contributions, we just can't do the things. One of the biggest uh, contribution uh, we do is providing feeding bottles. You know, when a mother is presented with a cleft baby, uh, you know, everybody wants to see the baby as normal as can be, looking as beautiful as any other baby. And, and when you see the baby with a cleft lip or palate, one of the concern is how do I feed this baby, right? right? And, and that's why feeding becomes a critical component because it not only allows the baby to thrive and be prepared for surgery, mm -hmm. it provides a sense of normalcy with the mother. So you know, um, yeah, go, go ahead. The cleft baby um, won't be able to, like, for example, um, breastfeed. Uh, that's incorrect. Um, it, it, it depends on the type of cleft Got it. Okay. and it depends on the um, cooperation initiative of the mother and the baby. You know, we, we've been to Sarawak. If you go to a long house and you have a cleft baby, no bottles, what will the mother do? It is baby's instinct at the time of birth to search for the mother's nipple. Yeah, right? That's human nature. Yes. And, and do, do you know that animals are also born with a cleft? Horses, no, rabbits. I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh. I mean, do, do, do they grow up bottle fat? No. no, no yeah. They right. still go and, and, and look and suckle the, 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 the mothers because each baby are born with an instinct to survive. Right. Right. How, how do you think, oh, you know, a cleft baby in the middle of the uh, Brazilian jungle, jungle Amazon, yeah. or, yes. or high up in the Himalayas, uh, survive because babies have this instinct. Right. And, and this is the thing that we try to, to, to try and, and, and help the, the mothers. Mm. You know, when it comes to, to feeding, some of the things that we also say look at the rhythm of your baby. Your baby wants to survive. You are an enabler to help your baby survive. Right. right? Once you have that understanding, you have that love, you have that sense of care uh, for the baby, more likely than not, uh, you know, that mother baby instinct will come into play. And you know, I'm, I'm not saying that everything is hunky dory. Mm -hmm. they are it cases. isn't even a normal, um, typical, let's say typical um, babies, it's not all hunky-dory. So you Correct. Know, it's just, Correct. It's, it's part of the whole process, right? I mean, I had right. to bottle feed my child because I couldn't breastfeed. So, you know, these things happen. Um, so, Zano, if I could just like ask you about, earlier you said that um, hospitals call you uh, when they've picked up something on the on the ultrasound, but obviously maybe not every hospital or or every parent will have their child perhaps in hospital. Maybe it's a small, tinier maternity clinic, for example. So right. how does a parent with a baby who has a craniofacial deformity um, contact Clapham, and and how does Clapham then get involved 
And then how does Clapham make the decision on which children they'll be able to sponsor uh, within their year's quota? Okay. Um, addressing your, the first part of your question, um, hard, hard, first of all, we're not doctors. So we would know that there is a potential uh, cleft uh, baby and cleft fetus uh, unless we are approached by the doctors. Right. Okay. Um, we have gone all the way to Sabah, Sarawak, um, Kelantan, Penang, Johor, you name it. We have been all over Malaysia. So a lot of the doctors know us. You know, um, not many people know that when it comes to government hospitals and teaching hospitals, there's more than 30, 30, 30 lebih that can manage cleft in some form and fashion. Out of that, there are 15 plus that can do uh, cleft surgeries and cleft uh, interventions. Coming back to your uh, earlier question, so if it is detected, first of all, for it to be detected, it has to be by a machine that's somewhat sophisticated, you know, 3D or 4D, 5D, whatever uh, digits uh, D that, that somebody wants. The, the one wants. that prints out the baby itself for you. <laughs> you <usually laughs> yeah. Baby. <laughs> yeah. They, they come in color, no yeah. longer in, in yeah. kind of black and white uh, 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 anymore. Uh, the doctors usually will tell the parents and the parents will contact us by phone for those who are not in Klang Valley. Mm -hmm. For those who are in Klang Valley, uh, we will have an antenatal counselling at the place of convenience for the mother. We have done that at fast food restaurants. We have, fun, we have done that at the lobby of the hospital or the uh, clinics. And we, we provide uh, you know, information so that the mother is prepared to receive the child, the baby, and not be shocked. Mm. You know, it, it, it's kind of interesting um, and I can't explain it but there's a lot of cases that we have seen where when we encourage the mother the mother to think positively to really talk to the baby because you know the, it, it, the cleft means the tissue has not closed you know there have been quite a number of cases where when the baby is born, either there's no cleft or the cleft is not as wide as what the image suggests. Right. right. Yeah, because, you know, from, from as, as far as, you know, again, we, we're not doctors, as far as we are concerned, you know, when you, the mother, and you have your, your, your fetus in your womb, you are one, mm. right? Whatever thing that you eat, you breathe, goes to the baby because it goes through your uh, placenta and the, the same uh, bloodstream and so on and so forth. So we always tell, encourage the mother, think positive, right? Your feeling will be felt by the baby, right? If you're positive, we say, inshallah, you know, the baby will also be uh, positive. So we, for, I'll give you an example. We had a case from uh, Sabah. Um, they were very worried, they were concerned, uh, they called us, we gave the antenatal uh, counselling and they, they are practicing uh, Christians and they say, you know what, uh, I'm going to take your suggestion on board, we're going to think uh, positively and we are going to pray for a miracle. And the baby was born here yeah, with a cleft but not as bad as they thought. Uh, you know, so, and, and he wrote an article in our newsletter and he called it Miracles Do Happen. So coming back to your second question, how do we uh, decide uh, who do we help and who we can help? Number one, we do not provide sponsorship for private hospitals. We, we, we cannot, we should not by right be providing this to parents who earn six digits. Five right. digit, if they right? can afford it, that's not fair yeah. to the others either who can't, right? Right. So, you know, we, we, we put a cap that says 3,000 ringgit per month on a net basis as a household income. And 3,000 is not too high a number or too low mm -hmm. a uh, number. We think that's, that's, that's about right. 
And the sponsorship is not about the, the cost of the intervention itself. We provide support for logistics because you know, quite a number of those whom we support are wage earners, meaning a taxi driver. Right. right. If you have to be in hospital for two days, that's two days of no earnings. Yes. So we, we, we yes. Yeah, so we provide some 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 incidentals and transportation costs. And you go to Sabah and Sarawak. Mm-hmm. I mean, they have to come out from the long houses. It could be a four day journey. Right. Yeah. And, and 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 the thing that we always tell parents and Malaysians is, do not make lack of funding as an excuse not to get your interventions done right and by intervention i don't mean surgery alone it's your orthodontics it's your speech it's your hearing Mm -hmm. because once you have all of that done and um, completed through the protocol you become more confident the chances of you being bullied will be a little bit less you know those are the things that you can do on your own Mm -hmm. to prepare yourself for the future and to prepare yourself to be a contributor to a society. Talking about contributors, you've said that um, two of your kids have now become doctors, which is fantastic. Um, Can you just tell us a little bit about sort of one of them and their story of when they came to you and the journey you took with them? Okay. Two of them went through the entire protocol, meaning it includes orthognatic. Orthognatic is usually done when uh, a child uh, is at a late teenage or a young adult because you have to move your jaws, mm-hmm. right? Uh, and it's typically an eight-hour surgery uh, for orthognatic. You have to put screws and, yes. and you move. Uh, because some, some cleft cases, if this is your, 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 your top, uh, jaw and a row of teeth and this is your bottom there's a tendency for it to be inside as opposed right. to outside like most of us and therefore your, 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 the area around your nose looks a little bit sunken mm-hmm. right so these two boys have had their orthognatic surgery done let me talk about uh, one person right he went through a lot and uh, you know he is now married he has a child, a daughter. Uh, and what makes him to be where he is today are a couple of things. Number one, the parental support was good, right? The mom, the father, uh, the rest of the family uh, supported him real well. Second, they understood CLEF protocol. They went through the CLEF uh, protocol. It, and and, and it, it, it's kind of interesting, uh, you know, as we went through his life, uh, he just completed his orthognatic surgery when he got called for an interview uh, at University of Malaya mm-hmm. to, to go to medical school. Right. Um, Gosh, timing. And, yeah, and uh, it was difficult because he was too swollen. He couldn't speak properly. So we prepared a letter to support his uh, application, to support his, his, his interview, to explain you know, he just gone through a surgery, you know, just because mm-hmm. he, he, he doesn't sound about right. And it doesn't mean that he's going to be sound that way when, become, when he becomes a doctor, you know. Mm-hmm. So, you know, the things we have, we have done, huh, uh, even to that extent, writing letters to help uh, people understand uh, and accept a person mm. so that he can get on uh, with his with his life. And what's his family also like? Uh, very middle income or slightly below income, uh, middle income level. Uh, I would say they are uh, middle income mm. uh, family. Uh, his father is from the armed forces. Uh, you know, his 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 mother is a housewife. Mm. Uh, we have another one. Uh, you know, uh, his. His mother is very appreciative of uh, uh, what has been done. Uh, she is now uh, a committee member of a Clapham, right. mm-hmm. contributing in her uh, own way towards uh, what she has seen her son went through. And she felt that it is right for her 
to help others by becoming a member of a sorry and and a, a, a committee member of a club. That's right because it doesn't just affect the child; it affects the whole family. It changes everyone's yeah. lives completely. Right. You see, um, from a psychological aspect, you know, I, I always share this with uh, doctors and, and and others. During the first year of life, who do you think you are treating? The, the parents. The parents. Yes, Asha. <laughs> I, 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 would, I, would lean, I, I would lean towards Asha. Really? Because you know, no, because as far as the baby is concerned, as long as I get my milk, I'm happy. Right. I'm okay. dry. I'm clean. I'm it, fed. I'm really, yeah. Okay, yeah. You, right. yeah. You you change my diapers. Yeah. You give me my food. I'm golden. You you, you, you cuddle me yeah. when 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 I'm uh, uneasy, unhappy. Mm. Right. Now the parents are a little bit different. You know, this is when I need to show my other family members my child. Mm. They keep asking me. I know you've been pregnant for twelve months. How come I don't see anything in your Facebook? Is there something wrong with your child? Mm. Right. So that 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 anxiety amongst the uh, parents would be more than the child because as far as the child is concerned, like I said, <laughs> you take care of me, I'm happy. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I'm good. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So, I, so only want, why, I only want your car keys when I'm old enough to exactly. drive. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why parents sometimes, you know, they, they say, can it be done in two months? No. Well, it can. But, you know, you, you are taking a risk there if you do it in, in, in uh, two months. C- can I do it this and that? No. So, you know, it's the parents to me who are being treated psychologically. I wanted right? to say something to that yeah. because, you know, having been a parent myself with not an easy... Um, birth and and, and and pregnancy and stuff that I think that a lot of parents, if they had a protocol, like you have a protocol of what to follow okay. for the best outcome yeah. of all of the things in place, right? Um, I think that's what's lacking. We don't have a guidebook or a handbook on how to get through this. And, um, you know, as you said, it's, it's a sort of a psychological thing. But when you have someone who can go, look, this is the map. People have done this before and gone through this map. We've done this before. We've gone through this map. This map works. Obviously, there'll be differences in individual things, but follow the map and you'll be okay. And we're here with you. I can imagine the amount of just relief and and kind of... uh, grace you can't kind of feel in that that moment where you have someone sort of leading you the way. Right. That, 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 that is absolutely right. Uh, uh, I think the first couple of days um, for, for cases where the mother only know about the Clive baby after the baby is born. Right. The, right. And, and, and the trauma can be a little bit more heightened for the firstborn. Right. When you have your third, your, your fifth, maybe a little bit uh, uh, different, you know. But when you know, you your first born, I mean, just a month ago, you had your baby shower. Uh, you had all kinds of stuff. You just went out and 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 bought a pram and 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 and, and, and you know, uh, what do you want to buy pink or you want to buy blue? Uh, you know, you kind of all prepared mentally for a a bundle of joy, right? And then suddenly, what you get is not quite you, not quite what you expected. Uh, you know, I'm in the middle of writing a book, and the book is 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 I would say uh, close to about seventy percent complete. Uh, that book is not just about the facts of uh, cleft, but it, it includes inputs from fourteen professors and medical dental uh, specialists, and it includes uh, the journey of eighteen parents. Uh, cleft individuals, uh, cleft children, and and and, you, and that is a lot of stories uh, in there. Um, but the the point that that you make is you know uh, knowing how to manage this would provide a huge relief. Well, unfortunately, okay, so, sorry. Yeah, I, unfortunately, you know, we at Clapham we feel. Um, a little bit sad in the sense that it's, it's difficult to reach those who are, I know, 
in um, Felda, in uh, mm. uh, Ulu, Bram, or wherever, other than by phone, other than by mail, or you know through WhatsApp and so on and so forth, there is nothing better than a face to face, right? And there is nothing better than uh, having this conversation with another parent that has a cleft jaw. So, so going off the back of that, how do you stay motivated? Um, you know, be it sort of dealing with the sadness of, of the children who are abandoned or these people who are marginalized, perhaps geographically or culturally or, or whatever the reason. Um, and there are so many slipping through your net, but also so many um, new mums who are going through this for the first time, panicking after seeing their child with a deformity. Like, how do you stay motivated and sort of very centered in the message that you're, or the mission that you're doing? Okay. Just to share a couple of uh, statistics, uh, you know, um, we say that cleft incidence is about one in 600 to 700 of life birth. If you look at the uh, statistics uh, department, there's about a half a million uh, newborns every year. So if you take that ratio and apply that to the number of newborns per year, there are 800 to 1,000 cleft babies born per year in Malaysia. The good news is, right, because we have been around, we have gone all the way uh, to Sabah, Sarawak, and some of our cleft campaign, we don't focus that in uh, Klang Valley. We go to Teluk Intan. We go to Likas. We go to Tawau. We go to Kuching. Because we wanted to spread the knowledge to areas outside of Klang Valley. Uh, what keeps us motivated is, I guess, you know, um, we all volunteers. I mean, I'm a grandpa. My wife is a, a grandma. She doesn't like to know that she's a grandma, <laughs> but uh, uh, you know, uh, it's we have a cleft child that keeps us motivated. Mm. Uh, the thing that 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 I would like to see is more people stepping up to the plate with just an element of sincerity and honesty and pureness of the heart to help. So, uh, so let me ask how how can people then? Um, help how can we malaysians help clapham's efforts um okay uh there's there's a couple of ways you know of course funding is one right uh and the other thing is if you see a cleft person that has not been treated let us know there are certain oh, okay. things that, that can still be done at any like age adults and at, yeah. at, 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 at any age recognizing the older you are uh, the chance of a perfect outcome is not there. It's slimmer, yeah. Yeah, right. I mean, if, if you have a cut on your wrist, right, the scarring will be more versus a baby that has a cut. Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, plus, uh, the wound will take longer uh, to heal, right? So that, that's something that the, the, the public can do uh, if you see a cleft person that has not been treated let us know we have helped you know, we had cases where um, a mid-20s almost to a, a, a late 20s did not have anything done he wanted to get married and the fiance said i will marry you if you go if you go get your cleft fix so we sponsored we brought him from another part of slango all over to uh, klang valley had his uh, surgeries and treatment done. They got married and he has two daughters. Uh, and now. they're fine? Relatively, you yeah, know, right. uh, re relatively uh, I think fine. what JD meant was that the daughters... Um, the, ba the babies are, are dead. Oh, are not, oh, sorry, not the, yeah. uh, the, 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 the babies, uh, one of them had a cleft and okay. we, we sponsored her surgery. It was just a notch as, as right. opposed to a, a, a cleft. The, 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 the thing as well is, you know, sometime back we had a, a program where uh, TNB uh, sponsored uh, a family day for cleft children. Mm -hmm. We went to Kitzania. Mm -hmm. So we had two busloads of 
yeah, two, two bus loads of uh, clef and non clef because we wanted them to be able to interact. So as the uh, children came down the stairs, you know, the cameramen were there and they asked us, mana budak clef? Tak nampak pun. Because all the clefs have been treated. I so see. You yes. can't really tell the right, right. Uh, difference unless you know about clef and you can really look uh, closely. That's what we want. At the end of the day, you see someone and you don't even know that he or she is a clef. So our role as Malaysians is just to inform you. We, you don't need us to donate money because you're, you're sustainable. <laughs> you're, you're doing well already as it is, right? Yes, like how do you sustain and keep that going? Yeah. So, you know. Well, uh, funding is always needed. Uh, take, for example, you know, we issue about a thousand feeding bottles. Those bottles cost a hundred ringgit each. We have, we have to get them from Australia. Gosh, and we, almighty. We, yeah, and we give them for, for the first set free of charge because we do not want to burden the, uh, uh, a family with a newborn cleft with additional payment, with additional, you have to pay for this, you have to pay for that. We, we, we give them free. So funding is something that we, we always need. Number two, if you see a cleft, please understand that you know, he or she did not wish to be born that way, mm. right? No need to make fun of them. Understand them, you know? Uh, they are part and parcel of uh, uh, society. Uh, if you see them unrepaired, you know, find ways and means either to inform us or find ways and means uh, to help them uh, get uh, treated. Uh, we had a case where someone went to uh, Pahang and stopped by a uh, roadside and there was this, this boy with a club selling fruits by the roadside. Uh, you know, he contacted us and, and, and we, we managed to help. We also had, had a case where uh, an American tourist went to Sabah, uh, saw a cleft uh, boy underneath the bridge. So he sent us a photo of the bridge and a photo of the, of the river and said, Clapham, please find this boy. Oh, how fabulous. How, how many bridges and rivers are there in Sarawak? He didn't tell us where. He gave oh, us a photo no. of the bridge, a photo of the yeah. river. Yeah. So, so you know. be specific when they <laughs> yeah. inform you. <laughs> yes, be a little bit more uh, specific. Uh, uh, that would really uh, help us out a lot. Yeah. All right. Okay. So I, I was just about to like so write out a check to Clapham, but you you you're sustainable. You're good. Even though even during the this, these times, MCO and everything, all your all your corporate uh, clients are. I mean, all your corporate backers are still providing you with funds? Well, you know, th uh, things have kind of slowed down uh, quite a lot. Uh, you know, unfortunately, like I said earlier, uh, cleft will continue to happen, right? We still get calls from hospital to say, you know, oh, uh, we have a cleft born today, right? And, and, and and because of COVID-19, we are a little bit selective on the times in the hospital uh, that we Makes go sense. and uh, visit. You know, uh, we are members of uh, six combined class clinic in uh, Klang Valley. Uh, we still attend uh, those uh, combined uh, class clinic uh, whenever they are open. We have one this Wednesday and we have one this Friday. So this week alone, we have two that we are, we are going to uh, attend. Uh, c coming back to your assertion that uh, we are self-sustaining in a way, yes, uh, but you know. Uh, we always should have space for more, <laughs> right? C correct. It, yes. Because we, 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 are, we, are, we are never stingy receiving funds. <laughs> 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 having having a, good receivers, that's good to know. Yeah, the, 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 the thing is those who contribute to, to Clapham uh, because we have an, an, uh, one of those tax waiver schemes with the uh, LHDN, Lemaga uh, Hasil uh, Dalam Negeri. So, so you, your, your contribution can be offset against your uh, tax uh, filing. And the other bit that, that I mentioned to you earlier, you know, we, we, we are trying to go with the face of life. We are now helping out the young adults, Clef, right? Uh, a few years ago, we spent a lot of money on the new mothers and so on and so forth. Now we're spending money towards uh, the other part of uh, cleft cycle. So whatever funds we have, we make sure that it's, it's as well uh, spread out 
uh, throughout the different um, objective, objectives and the things that, that, that we would like uh, to do. Mm -hmm.